And the meeting is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Okay, Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you, Bruce. For the past year, my husband and I have been dealing with legal issues with his family's property. Uh, just when we think we're so close to getting it resolved, one issue after another seems to appear. The attorneys mentioned to us that they've never seen a case quite like this. With the help of a practitioner from Plainfield, I am learning the benefits of patience and gratitude. And I'm also gaining the understanding that God and God alone is totally in control. My practitioner pointed out to me that overcoming each of these obstacles was really a blessing. And through these experiences, I am gaining spiritual understanding. This has proven to be so true. For a few months ago, I realized that a large bump near the heel of my foot, which I struggled with for several years, was completely gone. I have no idea when this took place, but I'm so grateful to God for all of his wonderful works. I'm grateful to Mary Baker Eddy, to this beautiful Christian science, Plainfield Church, and I'm so grateful for all the activities that we have here. Thank you for the readings tonight, Fairly, and for this beautiful service. Thank you. Jeremy. In the years before coming to Plainfield, I had a naive view of the intentions of other people. I pretty much thought that I would do my best and that everybody else was going to do their own part. Of course, that's, that is not always what happens. And while I tried to keep moving forward, I always wondered why certain behaviors were going on and what I could do about it. So I'm very grateful that this church is waking me up to how the human mind works and how Christian science shows us that only God can guide us through this life. Learning to spot the difference between false beliefs and God's reality is something that I would never have been able to reliably do without all I am learning here. This has also made me think of a misconception I had about what living my life for God would mean. I used to think it would mean turning a blind eye to the practical nature of living and dealing with more ab abstract concepts and ideas that meant nothing in normal life. I've been happy to find how wrong that belief was. Christian science is always practical and always just what I need to effectively get through any situation I come across. And if I ever miss how science is pointing the way through, then I'm grateful that practitioner support is right there to set me straight. It's wonderful to be a member of this church. What a blessing it is to be here. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Betty from California, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the readings and for the music tonight. I am very grateful tonight for being healed of a cold this week. I was experiencing some of the beginning symptoms of a cold and was working on knowing the, some truths about it. But the next morning it seemed worse, so I contacted a practitioner from the Plainfield Church for help. She agreed to help and told me to read pages uh, 390 to 393 from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. She also said there is no inaction, diseased action, overaction, nor reaction, also from Science and Health, and to expect to be healed. I read from pages 390 to 393, which is packed full of command statements about standing up to error, and that helped to break the mesmerism and the feeling of succumbing to a cold. When I looked up the no inaction statement, it said, 
quote, there is no, <clears throat> excuse me, there is no death, no inaction, and so on. And I remember thinking, hmm, I didn't remember the part about there is no death. And I read further ahead of the actual statement, and it said, quote, the dream of death must be mastered by mind here or hereafter. Thought will waken from its material declaration, I am dead, to, the, to catch this trumpet word of truth. There is no death, no inaction, diseased action, overaction, nor reaction. And that was when I re- unqu- unquote. And that was when I remembered my neighbor who had recently passed away and that I had been experiencing feelings of loss and mourning. And with that realization, the symptoms of the cold vanished and the sense of heaviness disappeared. I am very grateful for Christian Science, for Mary Baker Eddy, the Plainfield Church, and for the practitioner's strong and loving work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Colleen from Massachusetts, go ahead. Good evening. Tonight I'd like to give gratitude for this beautiful church. Um, and it, to me it represents the idea of what a true family is. For a long time I was really searching for the idea of what is a family. And I was looking for a good role model and a good idea. And um, growing up, I had a father who was an alcoholic, and we kind of walked in eggshells a lot. We'd have some fun times, and sometimes it wasn't very fun at all. And I think in my current family, a lot of times I just try to keep it peaceful and try to keep people happy as opposed to just really being happy. And when um, recently the Plainfield Church had a a members meeting and it was being talked about and um, the ideas were being brought forward that it was such a good meeting and that the members were growing so much and that they were tried and proven and were able to um, do some of the things more on their own um, as far as writing lessons and and um, other things like that. And I, I just thought, this is my idea of what a family is. It's based on love. And everyone comes with new ideas, and they're encouraged and supported. But yet, like a shepherd, there is a rod and there is a hook, if needed, maybe for some of the newer members. But in some of the older sheep, so to speak, are, are there, and they know what to do. They're in the fold. And it's a beautiful home here, and it's a beautiful family. And I can take these ideas and apply them in my own family. So I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. And also, thank you for the readings tonight and the music. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Michael from California, go ahead. Thank you all for the, the service and for the readings. Once again, just really well done. Uh, I just want to express gratitude for a healing I've had recently. Um, some time ago, I had to have a medical exam, and uh, there was this uh, pain I was having uh, on the side of my, uh, my stomach. And um, to make a long story short, um, I was working with a Plainfield practitioner, and I had to go and get like a more thorough checkup, and um, there was a lot of fear, and there was a lot of um, uncertainty uh, before I had this this examination. And um, some of the ideas, it's too many to mention here, but one really uh, potent idea and practice that I got from the Plainfield practitioner I was working with. Um, is that um, you wake up in the morning and you do the daily duties, try to have them memorized, and then you go through the seven uh, synonyms for God and you apply them to yourself. And 
there's a few more steps in that, but the main point of it all is to really internalize these ideas from the moment you wake up. And I can honestly say I've never been given that kind of instruction. Even though I've been through uh, the uh, BLD primary class instruction, I was never really given that sort of practical, useful um, information. And within these last few months that I've been working with the situation, I have just really, I really feel like I've grown a lot just with these ideas and to carry them with me uh, throughout my day and whatever I'm going through. And yes, I do stumble, but I keep going and I've learned a lot. And at some point, the pain has gone away and I really don't even remember exactly when it happened, but uh, I know the difference in the information I'm getting here and the, the learning I'm getting here as opposed to before. So thank you. Thank you for this. I'm grateful to God for this, this church and for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is Bruce. Um, I'm very thankful that this week our lesson that we're studying is love. It's a wonderful lesson, but it brought to mind a healing. I consider this a healing. It was quite a number of years ago. And um, I remember that a practitioner from this church said, no matter what the problem is, the answer is always to love more. And uh, that really stuck with me because it seemed like it's so simple yet profound. At that time, I was uh, working at a office and there was someone else that worked there in a supervisory position who was extremely difficult to work with and very unpleasant and towards me and some of the others. And one point it got to uh, quite a level of extremity and I remembered this practitioner's words. The answer is to love more. So I asked, how could I possibly love in this situation? And then I found this one watching point from 500 watching points, and this one happens to be number 367, where it says, watch that you heal with divine love and feel love for the true selfhood of your patient, no matter how repulsive the human wrappings may appear to be. And when I read that, I said, okay, I'm learning some wonderful things here in the Plainfield Church, like man is the expression of God and is lovely and lovable. And I love this truth. That's a true statement, and I love that statement of truth. And I felt so much better because I found something to love I could love the truth, the true idea about man. And I'm sure it saved me from uh, reacting adversely under this situation. But shortly thereafter, this one employee and the owner of the company agreed that he was going to leave the employment there and go find another job somewhere else. That's how it ended up in this case which made the working conditions at this office much more workable and more pleasant. So I'm thankful for God and the instruction and uh, the clear instruction that no matter what's going on, the answer is always to love more. God, who is love, has an answer. Mike from New York. Mike from New York, go ahead. Thank you very much for the beautiful readings and this wonderful service. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. All the recent activities here at the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent have been exceptional for my learning Christian science. This discussion on the remnant, and particularly this past Sunday's roundtable, made me realize how fortunate I have been to learn of Christian science and ultimately that this church. I'm grateful for all the scientists I've met in the other churches, class instructions, association, meetings, etc. <clears throat> These were all 
extremely kind, gracious, and loving people. I'm grateful for each step I took. Was <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm grateful each step I took. These scientists shared Christian science to the best of their ability. Since my first glorious coming to Christian science, I've tried to do likewise. Hopefully, what I shared with other people will show my love for the science and its infinite possibilities. I'm grateful for every inch of the journey, especially since coming here to Plainfield, because it has taught me to be a better person than I was in the past. I'm grateful to God, His two anointed ones, Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy, all the practitioner help and all the people here at Plainfield and all that goes on at this church. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening, and thank you for this service. On Monday, my daughter requested that I help another family member after some minor surgery while she was away. I said I would do this, but until I had, until I had to depart for church on Wednesday at a scheduled time. Soon after that conversation, I contacted a Plainfield practitioner by email. I went about my daily work thinking about how God is first and all our needs are met. Later in the afternoon, my 21-year-old grandchild came home from school saying he would stay until Thursday and would help wherever need be. He then proceeded to uh, stack all the cord, uh, and he did this unasked, to stack the cord of firewood that had been dumped in our driveway. By the time he was finished, two other people came home. I treated everyone to a takeout dinner, and we had a jolly good time. Thanks to practitioner support and all that is taught here at our holy Plainfield Church Independent, I am learning to put God first in all things. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you for the readings and the music tonight. I too am very grateful for the continual teachings at Plainfield Independent Church, especially at the Round Table and Bible Study. It is the weekly learning and then applying it step by step that has made such a profound difference in my life and walk with God. It has been helping me to drop misconceptions of God, Mrs. Eddy, and Christian science. And in its place, it's offered a clear, practical, healing understanding that can be practiced each day. It's been helping me see negative thinking that I'm entertaining and a way out of it. There are so many lessons to be learned that I can hardly conceive of doing this any other way. Um, I was also thinking as I was thinking about this testimony that it took me even like the first year I was here of continually listening to these classes and, and practitioner support to just kind of wash a lot of this way. It's sort of like they were talking about the flood tides of love that just have to kind of pour in. And it's, there's just so much that we need to take in. And after this last Sunday, it gave me a new appreciation for all the steps that have led me here to Plainfield. And I'm so grateful Plainfield was on the internet so I could find them. And it's very comforting to know that God wants us to, us to know him, and he makes a way for us to know him. I'm also very grateful for those who day after day, year after year, despite challenges, kept this light aglow for others to come and be taught so they could have a clear sense of the Bible and the writings of Mary Baker Eddy. I just wanted to add with a, a quote from, uh, I have a new appreciation from Mrs. Eddy from the new birth, and it says, quote, the new birth is not the work of a moment. It begins with moments and goes on with years. Moments of surrender to God, of childlike trust, and joyful adoption of good. Moments of self abnegation self-consecration, heaven-born hope, and spiritual love. 
Time may commence, but it cannot complete the new birth. Eternity does this, end quote. And thank you, Plainfield, for doing this for us. Thank you. Gary. I'd like to uh, express my gratitude tonight for another really valuable lesson that I've learned in this church. And uh, that lesson is the importance of tithing. Uh, I've learned that tithing is a very important sign of spiritual growth. Um, for many years, I was self-employed and didn't really know what my income was going to be each year. And one year, through some very um, bad choices on my part, I almost lost my business, started losing money at a tremendous rate. And uh, tithing, of course, is giving 10% of your income to your church. And for quite some time, 10% of my income was a negative number. So I had, I had a very difficult decision to make. Was I going to continue to giving to the church when I had no income, when, when I had less than no income, because I was depleting our family savings for quite some time. Well, we learn in Christian science that God is the source of all good and that his good is infinite. I knew I had some big lessons to learn and I knew that I had to trust God with everything in my life. And it came very clearly to me that I needed to do that and I needed to contribute, continue to contribute to the church. So every week I would take a deep breath and write a check. Uh, and every week I would watch our savings get more and more depleted. But I trusted God and I knew that I needed to learn something really, really important here. And just before our savings were to run out, the business turned around and I very quickly earned back everything that I had lost and learned a huge lesson about trusting God with everything in my life and showing my gratitude to him by tithing. I'm grateful for this lesson. I'm grateful for the practitioner help I had at the time to help straighten out my thinking so that my life would be in line with what God had in mind for us. I'm grateful for everything I've learned in this church. Uh, Christian science is a tremendous way of life. I'm so grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for, for giving us this science, for fighting the battles before us and winning and showing us uh, how, how to properly live a godlike life. I'm so grateful to be here tonight and thank you again for those readings as well. Thank you. Dede. Dede from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I first want to say thank you so much for tonight's readings and for this meeting. I'm thankful for this week's Bible lesson on love and for the constant reminder from 1 John chapter 4 that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth, casteth out fear. Through the teachings in this church, in the Bible, and science and health with key to the scriptures, I've learned the importance of doing all that I do out of love for God and man. This is helping me to check my motives in all things, and I'm understanding better 
that when my motives are led by pure, unself love, with the desire to do God's will only, then my activity is totally protected. So there is no reason to fear, no matter what aggressive suggestions arise to deter me from doing what is right. I'm so thankful for this lesson, which motivates me more as I progress and brings a deeper meaning, meaning to all that I do. I'm so thankful again for tonight's meeting. I'm very grateful to be here tonight and to be a part of all the good that's going on in this church that's blessing the world. Thank you. Thank you. Luba from Ohio, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> About a week ago, I experienced the loss of a wallet that appeared to have disappeared after returning from a shopping trip. I was very concerned and was searching my home and going over every step I had taken. I was about to return to the store since I could not reach anyone there by phone and was about to jump in my car to go there when I spotted my wallet in the car where it had somehow fallen. How grateful I was. And later that evening, I found two items I had borrowed from the library that had been missing for weeks. A great sense of gratitude swept over me as I realized the significance of it all. Nothing is ever lost. I'm so grateful to my practitioner and for all I'm learning at Plainfield. And thank you for tonight's reading and music. And I'm very, very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Craig. I thank very much the music, uh, the inspired music at the beginning of the service. It just sets a lovely tone and feeling within me of, of gratitude and, and, and happiness for things God's done. I uh, thank for the lesson and the readings that were given tonight always learning here, which is a great joy. Nowhere else uh, did I ever find myself learning something. It, uh, and it just, just, it's wonderful. In the lesson it says, Science of Health, page 239, and I, to ascertain our progress, we must learn where our affections are placed and whom we acknowledge and obey as God. And that just meant so much to me because it, it gives me a pause to stop and Stop and ask, God, how am I doing? What should I be doing? Uh, instead of just going day by day, doing what I think is the right thing or think is the loving thing, or at some point it runs into what is good for me to do, what's going to make me happy, which is a terrible place to be. But uh, in this church, you find that, yeah, progress is expected and you should be loving. But ask God, am I? And it goes back to motives. Really, why are you doing what you're doing? And, and it has helped me so much and kept me, kept me, or got me back on track so many times. Uh, uh, and I thank God for Mary Ray Grady for helping me stay on track and, and being a blessing. That's a very safe place. Love can't be warred against, can't be knocked over, can't be defeated, and it, uh, it's just a very great place to be. Thank you. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm so grateful for all that I'm learning and have learned through this church. This week, I remember the healing I have never really given gratitude for. A few years back, I used to drive about 40 minutes to work. At the time, one of my enslaving fears was being on the road, whether I was driving or someone else was driving. The awful thoughts of someone making a mistake would just have me so afraid, and the large cargo trucks that would come so close somebody sometimes or pass by so fast, used to have me on edge most of the time. Learning to pray before I get in my car during any driving for myself and everyone has helped me overcome this awful sense 
a false sense. But even more effective has been the surrendering to God's care, just trusting that God is present no matter what. One rainy day, there were so many huge trucks on the way, and I decided I'm going to use what I know. All the, the time the trucks were coming very, very fast. It was kind of snowy a bit, so it was just a tricky uh, road scene. I prayed for all the drivers, even for planes, everything that was moving that day and kept clear in my thinking that God is at the wheel of my car, everyone else's. God is present in every plane, every vehicle. And I kept my eyes off of the, of the road because I seemed to be in a lane that had trucks passing me by on both sides. So I kept repeating that God is present in every car. He is keeping everyone safe in their right lane. I kept thinking this way throughout, and the result was the most harmonious 40-minute drive ever. A beautiful sense of peace came over me and has left me free of that awful sense of gloom. I have a different feeling when I drive now. I think correctly, think of God and his care, his presence everywhere, and this has made me able to appreciate the beautiful sceneries along the way. Truly, when we love God and love to live his truth, we can keep our joy. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you for the readings tonight. I'm so grateful for Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, for all that I have learned in this church and for what Mrs. Eddy has given the world for its salvation. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. We have a note from Florida today. Dear friends, in gratitude for all the wonderful teaching resources on your plentiful website, please accept our donation to help with the maintenance. What a blessing to come and be fed in the true spirit of Christian science. Joyful blessings. And then something on our church website bulletin board from Pennsylvania. I wish to thank Dede for the readings on January 24th at our Wednesday meeting titled Expectation of Demonstration. They have been a comfort as well as a reminder. Listen for God, go to God, trust God, and the demonstration is assured. And then an email from British Columbia. I've recently learned of your church. There was a time when, where I blindly trusted the mother church, etc., and something like your church would have been scary and heretical. Ha ha, he says. <clears throat> but as a Christian science nurse for 20 years almost, I've been a fly on the wall to the inner workings of branch churches and members and practitioners and families and I've seen lots to be concerned about. I've learned for myself that the TMC and its board have made some serious errors along the way, and I would post that much of error that has entered the movement has come through the Office of Christian Science Nurse and or Facilities, which has been like a back door left unguarded by the TMC. It's deeply and intimately has affected the movement. I and others could write a book, and likely I will perhaps at some point. And I'm not alone here. I'm journalisted, etc., have also worked as a practitioner in the Yellow Pages, so I speak for many years of observation. I took class in 1990 at the age of 22 years. Bravo and amazed to have not heard of your church until now. There should be more independent Christian science churches as the trending signs are that the mainline movement is in continual decline and basically heading towards extinction, except for the rare branch church bucking the trend. The fact that the TMC is so incredibly wealthy 
is also disconcerting and bad in appearance. If the fruits are indicators of the tree, the TMC is yielding less and less fruit, not to mention producing plenty of rotten apples, some of which it has pushed away from itself and washed its hands, like the Christian Science Nurses, Christian Science Nursing Facilities, horror houses in worst cases for both patients and nurses, and that it helped create but has taken zero responsibility for. But I've never been as concerned about preserving the organization of church as much as keeping true to the actual spirit of Christian science. So, pressing on. If there's any email lists, sign me up. I hope to visit your branch church someday. So we are grateful to hear from these new people. We're getting many, especially now as our YouTube is expanding and going out further and further. And thank God for that. I'd like to say how grateful I am tonight, too, for those readings about keeping, keeping your joy. I've given this tense testimony before, but I'm so grateful for it because for many years you know, I considered myself a practicing Christian scientist. But during the winter months, I would often become depressed and ill. And I, I didn't really challenge it or question it until I came here. And a practitioner said that, that was, it was not right, that this was uh, God's season. Every season is God's season. And to think that there is some season in which you get depressed and ill is actually malpractice on an innocent season. <laughs> and I'd never thought of it that way before. But she said we need to love all of God's seasons and express God's love and radiate his love and to learn to love the winter months. Of course, living here in the Northeast, they can get very cold and snowy. And at that time, that is what I learned to do. I learned to love winter and I do love winter. I enjoy the winter walks. I enjoy the beautiful scenery. I love the snow. I totally, I totally changed. And because my thought changed, I was no longer depressed. I was joyful and I was also healthy. And I saw what a lie this is, what a terrible lie that uh, we have to suffer through any kind of season. These are God's seasons and he gives them to us and, and he gives them to us to enjoy. And uh, I'm so grateful for this dear practitioner. She didn't let anything get shoved under the carpet. <laughs> it all came out to be healed. And here I had suffered with that for many years and never questioned it, came here and it was healed. So grateful for Christian Science and Mrs. Eddy giving us this wonderful way of life where all our troubles come to the light of day to be healed. And I'm so grateful for this very beautiful service tonight. Thank you.